James Harden. He, I mean, he plays a more, I mean, the quarterback position is more important than any single NBA player outside of four or five guys, right? Four or five guys, maybe in the NBA, can dictate your terms. But outside that, it's, it's about QB play. All right, fun show, good show. Thanks to Pretty Daddy. And by the way, good for Tom. Leaving in true love. And Kelsey and Taylor Swift. That's, that's beautiful. We'll keep the beauty going tomorrow on CBS Sports Radio. Thanks for listening. I'm Bill Rudd. It is Superstar Battery Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Get up to a $25 gift card after rebate with the purchase of select Superstar batteries, the best replacement batteries for cars, trucks, SUVs, motorcycles, lawn and guard, marine, and more. The professional parts people will test your old battery for free, and if it needs to be replaced, they will help you find the right battery for your vehicle and budget. For power, performance, and reliability, choose Superstar batteries exclusively at O'Reilly Auto Parts. At Simply Safe, our award winning home security has advanced sensors, HD cameras, and now this 24 7 live guard protection. Only from Simply Safe. Monitoring agents can see and speak to intruders through our indoor camera to help stop crime in real time and for fast police response. Now get 45% off any new system with Fast Protect monitoring at simplysafe.com slash radio. Advanced home security, 24 7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Familia is your go-to spot for the best Italian dishes around, including pizzas, pastas, salads, and homemade desserts. That's Familia. Enjoy half-off wine night on Wednesdays, $3 drafts on Thursdays, or get a pizza of the week for just 12 bucks. That's Familia. Plus your order online or call 689-6330, and Familia will have your order ready in their drive through window for pickup. That's Familia. Clip, really? Oh, sorry. Familia on Fire Tower Road in Winterville near Pitt Community College. Do you need custom t-shirts, apparel, or promotional items for your business, organization, or event? Keep it local and print it local with University Sportswear. University Sportswear is your one-stop shop to help promote your business and always provide superior customer service. No matter what apparel you need for your team or customers, University Sportswear can make it happen. Visit universitysportswearenc.com for contact information. University Sportswear, the official sportswear provider of Pirate Radio. Go Pirates! The Buccaneer Music Hall is your beacon of music in the land of pirates in eastern North Carolina. Open seven days a week with live music. Every Monday, open mic night. Tuesday, karaoke with DJ Captain Morgan. Wednesday, acoustic night. Thursday night, line dancing and music from DJ Dog. On Friday and Saturday night, enjoy the best local bands in the area. And don't forget, Sunday fun day during football season with NFL jersey giveaways and more. Check out Facebook and Instagram for all up-to-date info. Y'all come get bucked up. Go Pirates! turkey, ham, bacon. These and other meats are great around the holidays and every other day, but they all leave behind grease when you cook them, and grease is a real pain in the drain. When you pour grease down a drain, it cools and can clog sewer lines. That can lead to sewer spills, which are messy, bad for the environment, and can also be expensive. Never pour grease down the drain. Instead, collect it in a container like a used soup can or jar. Let it cool and throw it away in the trash. Together, we can protect our sewer system and the environment. For more information, go to GUC.com. Washington's favorite place to eat and where all the locals go is down on Main Street. Down on Main Street's famous weekday lunch specials are only $7.99. Stop by for the house salad with grilled chicken, the half club sandwich with chips, or everyone's favorite, the fried shrimp plate. After work, down on Main Street is the perfect spot for dinner and a drink on the patio. Join down on Main Street every Wednesday for half price wings from four to close. Down on Main Street on Main Street in historic downtown Washington. Go Pirates! Hey Pirate Nation, this is Taylor from Fleet Feet, making sure you have the best and most comfortable shoes this tailgate season. Locally owned and operated by EC alums, Chris and Kendra Lunyon, Fleet Feet of Greenville provides solutions through one-on-one services to runners, walkers, and everyone in between. Fleet Feet has the tools and technology to get you in the right shoes, including a 3D foot scanner that measures arch height, width, and more. Come see us at 207 East Arlington Boulevard in the old Gordon's Coffin Ski location. Fleet Feet, we run for you. 
Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with, with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1 800 682 6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. Hi, Pirates. This is Holden Aylers. As I enter in a new season of life, it is still important to have a great team behind me. Whether you're going away to school for the first time, getting married, starting a family, or planning for your golden years, the choices can seem overwhelming and confusing. Let the team at Buck Insurance Agency make it easy as you enter into your next season. They have been helping people just like us for over 30 years. Give the Buck Insurance Agency a call today at 877-357-1966. Go Pirates. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. This is Eastern Carolina's longest-running sports radio show. The Brian Bailey Show is on the air. The Brian Bailey Show is powered by Greenville Utilities and also brought to you by The Angus Grill, Bostic Sug, Bojangles, East Coast Grading, Gavigan Insurance, Greenville Auto World, Papa John's, Greenville Utility Company, Pepsi, The Rick House, Taft Taft and Hagler, and Tiebreakers. And now, here's Brian Bailey. Okay, happy Monday, everybody. Welcome into our show. Pirates fall at home for homecoming by the final of 10-7 to to the Charlotte 49ers. And the Pirates are now just 1-6 as East Carolina heads to Texas San Antonio to take on the Roadrunners of UTSA, one of the new schools in the American Athletic Conference. And the Pirates are big double-digit underdogs in that game. So we'll talk a little bit about that coming up. Our good friend Robert Jones, the three-time Super Bowl champion, the East Carolina All-American, the Hall of Famer at East Carolina. Carolina, and he's always got some thoughts on pirate football. He loves his pirates in good times and in bad times. And he's going to join us from his home in Raleigh today to talk pirate football, talk a little cowboy football as well. Robert Jones, the three-time Super Bowl champ, is our guest on this Monday, and he'll join us coming up after this. You love them. I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners, whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252-531-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. The best burgers around. Everyone loves a thick, juicy, and fresh burger. Tiebreakers in Greenville, plus the all new Tiebreakers in Winterville do real burgers better than anybody. So don't just go to any burger themed restaurant chain. It's time to break the chain and eat local. Tiebreakers, real burgers at its best. Everybody loves burgers. It's Bostick Sug Furniture's big anniversary blowout, and we're celebrating it in style with huge anniversary savings on hundreds of items in stock, plus six months special financing. Experience the most restful, rejuvenating sleep ever on a comfortable mattress at a very comfortable price with up to 48 months special financing. Plus, in celebration of our eight decades in business, register for over eight anniversary giveaways during the big anniversary blowout at Bostick Sug Furniture. 
The Angus Grill is your premier spot for the best burgers, cheesesteaks, and brisket sandwiches around. Join us for our unmatched variety of burger combinations. From the mushroom bacon Swiss burger to the jalapeno popper burger to the original Angus Classic. Pair that burger with our amazing onion rings, tots, fries, or sweet potato fries. Angus Grill, with four amazing locations in eastern North Carolina, including Winterville near Pitt Community College, on Jarvis Street in Uptown Greenville, and on Statensburg Road near the hospital. It's the best burger around, guaranteed. UBE and PirateWare.com are proud to offer the Pirate Nation its largest inventory of ECU merchandise and tailgate supplies ever. UBE has the best prices in town, so that makes UBE your one-stop shop for all things ECU. UBE does daily restocks of Champion, Adidas, and Under Armour. Don't forget to bring your young pirates to plunder the Crow's Nest, which is the only kid's store dedicated to ECU. Plenty of free parking in Uptown Greenville. Visit them online at PirateWare.com. Go Pirates! The icy treat that can't be beat is Sparky Snowballs. From big kids to little kids, Sparky Snowballs has been making smiles happen for over 20 years. If you're not in the mood to chill out with a snowball, Sparky's funnel cakes and fried Oreos are a perfect Sparky-licious treat every time. Are you having an event, party, or fundraiser? Call Sparky's to come on site. Remember to follow Sparky's on Facebook or visit SparkySnowballs.com to see where they'll be next. This is Dale Murphy, two-time National League MVP and number three with the Atlanta Braves. And you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, providing reliable utility solutions to the Greenville region since 1905. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back on this Monday. One of my all-time favorite pirates, in fact, one of my all-time favorite people is Robert Jones, three-time Super Bowl champ, the East Carolina All-American, and the Hall of Famer at East Carolina. He joins us from Raleigh today to talk a little pirate football, a little cowboy football. Robert, what are you up to today? Oh, Brian, I'm just waiting on your call man i appreciate it it's always a pleasure to be on your show man i love having you on and uh how many days a week do you take polishing those super bowl rings up do you do it once a week twice a week what do you do you know what brian i haven't pulled those things out you know in, in a few weeks now i mean i i normally wear them to zay's game i wear one you know because everybody will ask to see a ring but you know for the most part man if i'm just Going to dinner with my wife or something like that. I'm not. I'm not wearing the ring. I don't even worry about it, man. I talked to Monisha and I got a deal set that uh, if anything ever happens to you, I got dibs on one of those rings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> You can get you can get it now. I probably, yeah, I can work on that. All right, so so let's talk pirate football. Have you had a chance to watch the games this year? And 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 what do you think's going on at East Carolina right now? Um. Brian, first of all, I've I've had a chance to watch bits and pieces. I've had it on here, you know, at my house, and um, you know, I would watch bits and pieces, and then you know, when things start to get get bad or go south, you know, I turn it off and I go to another game. I'm just being honest with you. You know, I love my school. Um, this year, unfortunately, I hadn't had a chance to to just make it to a game live and. You know, we contemplated back and forth going to the to the homecoming game, and just um, time wouldn't permit. So, you know, we had to we had to watch our daughter man play uh, volleyball, and that's not a sacrifice. That's a privilege and an honor to watch her. So we spent our time watching our daughter play volleyball, and she did real well. So um, I have gotten you know a little bit of feedback. I watch highlights, and um, you know, I gotta honestly say, I really don't think. It's the coaching, man. I really don't think it's the coaching. I, I think Mike Houston is a very good coach. I, I just don't think that's the, that's the problem. Well, well, you know, my problem with when people start saying this guy should be fired or that guy should be fired, it's almost like you got to have a plan. Like, if you're going to make a change, you've got to have a whole plan in place. And I don't think anybody, you know, anybody can sit around and just say, oh, okay, they got to do this, got to do that. I mean, obviously, it's not the season that Mike Houston wanted. It's not the season those coaches wanted. But, I mean, you know, you're, you're at East Carolina. I think you're going to have valleys and peaks and, and things like that. And, obviously, you know, I think some of the things that they had banked 
banked on for 2023 haven't panned out. There's no question about that. Uh, but it's just, you know, and, and we've, we've lived through times like this before at East Carolina. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on, because I, people think of Robert Jones and Jeff Blake, and they think of the, the magical season of 1991. They think of the 92 Peach Bowl and the win over NC State. But people don't really think about much the first couple of years that you guys were all together and the struggles that you guys had, because they were major struggles, weren't they? Well, they were they were major struggles, Brian. I, I think the difference is is that you know for most teams, you know you can look at um, Dion in Colorado and you can say, hey, because he's a celebrity, major celebrity, you know he can he can bring in the recruits and and part of that is true. But Dion is getting these kids to buy in, and Bill Lewis, you know when he came in, and I was a sophomore. He was selling something, and then we were willing to buy it. And it's that old thing, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. We had some seniors that wouldn't buy into Bill Lewis, and it became an issue. So that's why you had that that one big meeting. I know you heard about where, where the guys were trying to boycott the the practice and the, and the winter workouts, and some of us freshmen, um, and, and I'm going to take the, uh, the lead in that, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't with that. I was buying in because I wanted change. I came from a winning program. I wanted change, and I wanted to make a difference. I know Jeff wanted to make a difference. I know a lot of us, of, of us freshmen, wanted to make a difference. So, I just put that all in, you know, in, in one basket, and and just say, you know, a guy like Dion in, in modern day football. So, so it won't sound like I'm just talking about the old days. Dion is an old school coach and he's selling these kids something and they're buying in. They're believing that, you know, they are who he's saying that they are. You got to be able to buy in. And I just don't think that everybody is buying in to what coach Houston and his staff is putting out there. You know, you can say we can keep changing coaches every single year. I think Scotty Montgomery was a great coach. I don't care what nobody say. I think the man was a great coach, and I didn't think we needed change as far as the coaching staff. But, you know, sometimes it, you got to let people do what they want to do to find out, you know, what's going on. So if you change Mike Houston now, then, you know, like you say, you got to come up with a plan. You know, who's going to come in here and sell these kids something that they're willing to buy and buy into, and they're going to dedicate it you know, everything that they do to this game. It's got to be something that you're passionate about. It's got to be something that you love to do and you want to be able to, uh, um, you know, to give back to the East Carolina community, you know, and, and let them see and be proud of a football team that that's a really good football team. I think there's a lot of great athletes on that team. I think there's a lot of great athletes on it. Nobody goes out and recruit guys that can't play. You know, so um, do I believe in tier one, tier two, tier three? Yeah, I believe in that. But the developing is the is the best part. And I think Coach Houston has done a great job, you know, in trying to develop players, given what, he, what he's got. Um, again, I repeat, I just don't think the coaching – is the issue. Uh, I think the guys are just not buying in to what he's saying. I think uh, we mentioned it last week. I didn't think Scotty Montgomery was a good fit at East Carolina, but I think obviously he's an outstanding coach because he's with the Lions now and he's working for a, a really good coach there. And the Lions, until yesterday, had it really, you know, had a great start to the season. They started five and one, got knocked off by the Ravens badly yesterday. But but when you look at, at Coach Houston and you look at, at at the NIL issues that they're having to deal with, I mean, you know, Pirates lost some really good players through. NIL deals, you know, this past year, uh, recruiting wise and from their own team. And it's just, you know, I, I don't know. And I know the Boneyard folks have done a really good job to get money together and they, they're rallying together. I get all that. But but it, it's hard in Greenville, North Carolina. And then there are other, you know, cities that, that are smaller type towns that have major college football. 
football and having trying to do the same thing. But there's such a, a myriad of different ideas, and I don't know. I think the NIL thing has complicated things somewhat, and uh, and all of a sudden you're in a situation like you're in. It sure hasn't made football, college football, better. I mean, my whole philosophy of how the NIL deal should should be handled. You know, some people think it's crazy. I think, you know, I think it's it's to to eliminate what we're just talking about right now, and that is, you know, nil deals. I don't disagree with them, but I think, you know, it should be it should be money held until they graduate or they move on to the NFL. You don't give them their money until they graduate. If there's an emergency, if you need something, they get their money, but. Everybody now is trying to get rich their freshman year coming in and don't have no experience. They don't have no financial experience, none of that, how to handle money. And then that stuff becomes more important than football in their minds. It's like it's all about wearing the bling, bling, bling and the watch and the jewelry and the necklaces and looking cool and got your, you know, your car. And, I mean, all of that stuff to me is a big distraction. And it's, and it's, and it's so in the way of you really focusing on what you really came there for. And I'm so glad that I didn't have to go through that. And I'm saying it, you know, with passion and from my heart that obviously when we were young and we played at East Carolina, we didn't have those things to even think about. We had two uniforms, an away uniform and a home uniform, and and really just two jerseys because the pants were the same color. Now they got different helmets. They got black helmets. They got white helmets. They got purple helmets. They got all kinds of helmets, jerseys, shoes. And so everything becomes more of a of a focus than, than what you're really there for, and that's to actually play football. Let's, let's really focus on our game plan. Let's really focus on what we've been taught, go out on the field, execute it. All that other stuff would come. Um, and I just it's just screwing up college football, period. And it hurts East Carolina more because there's not enough money for this player. And if he sees it somewhere else, he'll go this place and play. Um, sometimes when you, when you, you know, you, you think you're, you're making the playing fields even, or you're trying to help the student or you're trying to help the person, um, you really start hurting them. Yeah, I think the NIL deals, you know, were set up for for guys, you know, in college that w- want to make a little bit of cash, enough to survive on, enough, maybe a little more than that. But it's turned into, you know, a recruiting deal, and, and you know, we can get you this, we can get you that. I mean, just think about when Zay was coming along, and, and you're you're the dad, and Zay's looking around for a college. I mean, yeah, you know, and he wasn't heavily recruited, obviously, and he should have been, but but still, he would have gotten some opportunities. He, he wasn't heavily recruited at all. And um, if any of my boys were being recruited in this time right now with the NIL deals, I think I would be more like a LeVar Ball. I would control it, control it, control it. Because what it would do, in, in my opinion, it's the way I'm parenting, it will, it will affect the way these kids behave in school and how they come up and how they're, they're being raised. Like, you give a young kid a bunch of money, and now he thinks he has the power. And you can't do nothing with him on the football field. You can't coach him. And, and that's that's really you know exactly right. It's it's just hard to hard to imagine the situations that that you're in now in recruiting because that was not how it was set up. It's like the joke is that SMU all the things they did wrong to get the death penalty are all legal now, and and everybody's you know taking advantage of it, and you know players are getting forty and fifty, and you know and and you know your your top tier players, your quarterbacks and, and your stars are getting way more money than that, and a lot of these kids are looking at it like. You know, I know the odds of making it to the NFL. I want to go to the NFL, but the odds of me making it are long. But if I can get, you know, this amount of money right now, I might not be set for life, but I've got a good jump on life. They got they they may feel like they have a good jump on life, but most of them kids, man, you know, especially if you give it to them as a freshman, by the time they're seniors, if they don't make it to the NFL, they would have spent the money and just, you know, really uh, – as the young people say, flex on college campuses for four years and then you're out in the streets after that. Um, hopefully they, they've gotten a degree. Like like I said, the money should be, you know, 
delayed until they graduate or if they decide to go on to the NFL, once they declare for the NFL, then they get their money. But I wouldn't give it to them up front. As a freshman, sophomore, there's no way. I wouldn't do it. If, if I was if I was putting the rule down, I would not give it to them until that time. Um, I think you have to be mature to handle that much money um, in college. Man, if you would give me $100,000 as a freshman. Man. Oh, oh my God. We'd have, we'd have been together in downtown Greenville having a party, right? Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, and I'd have been out, out back staying in your shed, you know, working for you. <laughs> I I swear it just you know because I was here when you were here obviously and and seeing everything there and just the way it's all changed and like you said with all the NIO money and everything it's just it's just mind boggling of you know how this whole situation you know college sports has almost become professional sports and uh, you got to try to keep up with the Joneses but it's really difficult because a lot of the you know a lot of the money that colleges try to raise like for an indoor practice facility in East Carolina and for other you know football meetings rooms and all that stuff they try to raise money for well now they're trying to raise money for nil deals and so that's taking a cut out of that money that's trying to be raised i mean it's it's there's only so much money out there isn't it um i think you can raise you can raise money you know when it comes to things like the the nil deals and and whatever promotions i mean i think if you're passionate enough and you're persistent enough you will raise the money it's like the athletic director at Colorado. We don't have the money to sign you, Dion, but we'll get the money. So he was determined to make it happen because he had a vision. Um, and I, I just, I like that approach. I like that approach of having a vision. I'm just, I'm just old school and I'm stuck in a, in a time where, you know, I, I do feel like, I do feel like if a, if a kid is struggling on campus and he needs food, I don't. I don't feel it should have been as strict as it was, where a coach couldn't feed a player, a coach couldn't have a player come over to his house and eat. I think this stuff all stemmed from, you know, coaches being able to give uh, a player something to to eat or buy him something like a pair of shoes or you know, because a lot of a lot of kids they come into college they they're not as fortunate as some other kids. So I think that's how the whole thing started. But um, that was just it, it it just seems like there was not a real good plan on how this thing should handle because it's ruined college football in my opinion. And when the bowl games get here, you know, for the the teams that are eligible for bowl game, you know this yourself, Brian. Half of the guys won't even play yeah. because they they're thinking now That's right. And they won't play. So a number one team or number two team, three, four, five team are not going to be a number one, two, three, four, five in a bowl game. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons I'm looking forward to the expanded playoff because I think with more to play for, that guys will stay and play, and and that's that's going to be important as we uh, venture on down the line. Robert Jones, three-time Super Bowl champion, East Carolina All-American Hall of Famer with the Pirates, our guest today joining us from Raleigh. Let's take a commercial break right now. We'll come back and we'll touch on some other topics as well. Back with more on the Brian Bailey Show on this Monday after this. Hey, Miles, isn't it amazing to think our family has been distributing soft drinks since 1923? It certainly is, Landon. And with that comes a lot of change. But what hasn't changed is our dedication and commitment to our customers. I'm Miles Menges. And I'm Landon Menges with Menges Bottling Group. Our family has taken great pride in refreshing our neighbors, and we are proud to have remained locally owned and operated for over a century. From our family to yours, we say thank you and are honored to be a part of this wonderful community. Here's to 100 as we celebrate our employees and our customers all over East North Carolina. From generations before us and to future generations. Cheers to the next 100 years. Cheers to the next 100 years.
Let me show you what goes on behind the scenes when making a shakaroni. We created shakaroni my way. An extra large pizza topped with extra cheese and extra pepperoni. It's a simple recipe. We take everything you love, then we build it bigger. Pizza gets bigger when you shakaroni. Hey, Pirate fans, Papa John's is the MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at papajohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. Go Pirates. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Have you heard? Green Velado World is under new ownership and is now part of the DriveHereNow.com network. DriveHereNow.com is run by local people who buy, service, detail, and sell everything directly to you. Green Velado World is now the fifth dealership to join the DriveHereNow.com network. Get car shopping today at DriveHereNow.com and choose a location near you. DriveHereNow.com, serving Eastern North Carolina for over 47 years and proud supporter of the Pirates. It's bow time. Chicken or biscuits? That's an impossible choice. How can you decide between Bojangles' perfectly crispy, boldly seasoned chicken or their fluffy, made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuits? Well, the good news is you don't have to. With a Cajun chicken filet biscuit, you get the best of both worlds. An all-white meat chicken breast marinated with a bold blend of seasonings and served up on a fluffy, golden buttermilk biscuit. When it comes to real-deal southern flavor, there's no reason you can't have it all. Order a Cajun chicken filet biscuit today. It's bow time. Ah, it's that time of year again. Football is back and the pads are popping. And off the field, it's the popcorn at Wally's 2 Kettle Corn that's popping. Whether it's a movie night or watching the big game with your team, Wally's 2 has you covered like ECU's defensive backs. They have over 50 flavors to choose from, including classics like cheddar, caramel, or my favorite, better butter. Or specialty flavors such as Chicago Style, Wintergreen Mix, and MJ's Cheesecake. Check them out on Facebook or stop by and see Wally today on Fire Tower Road across from Sam Jones Barbecue. Wally's 2 Kettle Corn. Make it a popping day. My name is Will Bell, and I'm a proud ECU graduate and come from a big pirate family, and I'm running for Greenville City Council at large. I'm running for my fourth term and believe in safety, jobs, and stability. Safety means making Greenville the best place for first responders to call home. Jobs means focusing on expanding industries through partnerships like the ENC Alliance, and stability means no more tax increases. Vote now or on November 7th for Will Bell for Greenville City Council at large. For more information, visit my Facebook page today at Will Bell for Greenville City Council. Pirate Radio. I can promise you we are going to be a hard-nosed, physical, fundamentally sound, disciplined football team. We're going to compete and go toe-to-toe with anybody we match up against. But that's going to be our mentality year-round. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned, community-powered. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back on this Monday. Robert Jones, three-time Super Bowl champ with the Dallas Cowboys, the East Carolina All-American from the dream season back in 1991. And the uh, Hall of Famer. You guys are pointing at something. I can't read it. Does this say the Tulane game's a 3.30 kickoff? Got it. All right. Just announced the Tulane game. East Carolina hosting the Tulane Green Wave is a 3.30 kickoff at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium in two weeks. ESPN 2 game, and, and, and it'll be a week from this Saturday. East Carolina and UTSA coming up this Saturday in a 3.30 kickoff, and then next week it's Tulane in a 3.30 kickoff on ESPN 2. Or ESPNU. Or either ESPNU. Or it's either ESPN 2 or ESPNU. Check your local listings, and you'll figure that one out. But both games coming up, UTSA on the roads, 3.30, home against Tulane also set for a 3.30 kickoff. Pirates at 1-6 and six on the year desperate to try to turn things around. Robert Jones is our guest. Robert, the next question I was going to ask you is is the fact, you know, when you're on a defensive side of the football and you're playing well defensively like the Pirates are this year, how frustrating is it when the offense can't get going? You know, did you and Jeff Blake ever have any arguments back then back in the day? No, we we never had any arguments, man. I mean, there were some games that um uh, you know, Jeff could have fussed at me when we played NC State in the Peach Bowl because we we gave up what? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but I did have a pick in that game, so I redeemed myself. But, um, I mean, there are going to be some teams, especially now that, you know, it's just good football. People like to see scoring. And now, you know, you can't even sack a quarterback and fall on a quarterback. You can't horse collar tackle anybody. Um, you know, and if you hit a guy in the chest and your helmet just slightly slides up and hit his face mask, that's a personal foul. Um, you know, so they, they, 
just position the game to where the offense is going to score. It, they're just going to score. Um, so it's if you can play defense and you can keep a team, you know, to a a, a ten point game or seventeen points or less is the is kind of like the standard number. Um, you know, you're playing really really good defense, but it's expected for teams that you know to score a lot of points because now the game is just is just so different. I mean. You hardly hear about any great college running backs anymore. It's more the wide receivers, it's quarterbacks, the cornerbacks, defensive ends, you know, pass rusher type guys. So um, I didn't fuss at Jeff. Jeff didn't fuss at me. I don't think, you know, teams, they fuss at each other because, you know, offense is not scoring enough points. I just think that um, when they when they get ahead and they can win, or they won the game, all that stuff goes out of the window. I mean, people just, they, they want to win, but somebody's not willing, most people are not willing to put in the time to do what it takes to win. Yeah, I, I think that's what you're looking at right now with this pirate football team is, is that they've had glimmers, you know, flashes of some success in some games. They were in some games. Things went south in the fourth quarter a couple of times. You think back to Marshall. You think back to Rice. I mean, they, you know, and, and the confidence factor is, is there. When you get in the fourth quarter, some teams know, hey, we're going to win this game. And I think you've got an East Carolina pirate football team right now that gets in the fourth quarter and thinks, you know, man, you know, we, we, we got to hang on. You know, do we have a chance to win this game? And it just seems like it's almost like schlep rock. Something bad happens. This past game, the Pirates are driving to try to kick a, a game-tying field goal. You know, they, they tell Alex Flynn not to get sacked. You can't take a sack. And I know, you know, he's, he's a kid. He's running around for his life out there because he didn't, you know, the offensive line didn't do him any favors most of that game. And they're chasing him down, and he takes the sack, which, which hurt East Carolina. The other thing that hurt East Carolina on that last drive, Robert, I don't know if you saw it or not, but there was a play where uh, I think it was so well that caught the ball and there was a targeting call on the field. Now, I didn't think when I first saw it that it was targeting. And then I looked at the replay and I thought back when they first started calling targeting, I didn't think that was targeting. But I've seen so many targeting calls since then that it almost had to be targeting. And then they picked it up and decided that it wasn't targeting. Do you, do you understand what exactly targeting is? Brian. Brian, I understand, and I'm gonna ask you this question. Ask me. When I played, when I played, and that kind of hit happened, what was the call? The call was it was a good hit. Keep playing. It was just a good hit. So, you know where I'm going with this. I just think the game is turned into a little two hand touch game, which is why the Pro Bowl now is two hand touch. It's not physical. Um, yeah, I don't think football is the most dangerous sport. You know that that exists today. I, I can name a lot of a lot more sports that are that are more dangerous. Um, you know, I'm I'm saying that to say that I don't even have to see what happened with the targeting call because I just explained it earlier. If your helmet barely touches yeah. the, if your helmet touches his helmet, it is targeting. You know, bottom line, and and that wide receiver could be lowering his head a little bit to protect himself which he should do, but then you got the guy that's making the tackle, you know, he's hitting him in the chest, and when you lower your head, your helmet hit his helmet. So I think those refs, man, got like itchy hands, boy, when it comes to that that flag. That flag, they, they're running with their hand on the flag when they see that because they anticipate throwing the flag for that call. Um, it just it takes the momentum out of a player. It takes the momentum out of the game. It really decides whether who's you know this team is going to win or not. I mean, and it used to be you could overcome a flag, you could overcome stuff like that, but now you can't overcome that because you're in the last drive and you got a you got a call uh, uh, like that. It 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 just changes the entire game. It changes the entire game, and I and I just hate it. So. It doesn't surprise me. It doesn't shock me. Um, and so I've gotten so I've, I've gotten so biased about games where I just don't I don't want to watch certain games. I, I just kind of have it on as entertainment. And man, I'm out here cooking on my Blackstone Grill. <laughs>
<laughs> the man from Blackstone is cooking on his Blackstone, huh? <laughs> cooking on my Blackstone grill. <laughs> Robert Jones, three-time Super Bowl champ of the Dallas Cowboys and the former East Carolina All-American, our guest today. We've got questions and comments on our Facebook Live page. Uh, Kenny Curl, who's a big Cowboy fan. How about them, Cowboys? He asked uh, about Zay's injury. How's Zay's injury going? Um, I think he's he's nursing it really well, man. He's getting a lot of treatments. One of the things I told Zay, I'm like, when I got hurt, Isaiah, I'm like, the, you know, the the kind of the, the cardinal rule is two weeks. In two weeks, you got to be ready to play, unless it's an injury that's going to have you out for the season. But um, you know, you get the treatments that your trainers give you, and then you got to do treatments yourself outside of that. I'm like, I was. I was doing treatment seven to eight, nine times a day. But that's how you got to do it. You got to, it's it's more about being on the field and being ready and being, you know, uh, in a position where they can they can use you to play. You can't nurse that injury, can't nurse it. You can't feel like I can go on about my life. It is your job now. So he's doing a great job of doing that. He's, he's got a, a, a great masseuse that's massaging him. And um, getting his body back right, he, he gets a lot of treatment you know, at the facility. He lives there. He was there Saturday and Sunday. Obviously, they played Thursday. Um, Zay was in the training room Friday. I talked to him Friday, talked to him Saturday, talked to him Sunday. He says, Pop, I'm in the training room, in the training room. So I love hearing that. So, you know, I think you'll see him coming back soon, um, real soon. He's off to a great start this year, and he's made some outstanding catches, hasn't he? He's made some outstanding catches, and I think um, with Isaiah, I think, you know, with playing against Buffalo, he probably came back a little too early, but I don't think any person or anybody would have kept him out of that Buffalo game. I mean, Isaiah, when he carries the chip on his shoulder, yeah, uh, it motivates him to the highest level, and I think – you know, he wanted to prove to the, you know, the Buffalo community that you did draft a great player and that he wanted to prove to them that I can catch. And I think he showed them that he can catch. Well, I think he did too. And I think that he, uh, he showed a lot of people around Greenville that he could catch when he was in college at East Carolina. That was, there were some magical years for East Carolina. And when you look at the pirate offense today, and you think back to the days of Justin Hardy and then Zay Jones, and you know, just the, the way the pirates move the ball up and down the field and scored. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost come full circle, hasn't it? It's comfortable, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a little, I don't. I don't call it a joke. It's just on ongoing, Brian. Um, with me and Zay, I'm like, man, we take our '91 team. We'd have beat the crap. <laughs> <laughs> What's Zay say about that? He's like, he's like, Pop, man, who 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 y'all got to cover? Can't nobody cover. <laughs> Who's gonna cover me, Pop? It ain't gonna be you. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell him. I'll tell him. I'm like, hey, I'll cover you all day long. Wow. You know, I used to cover Wayne Corbett, Keyshawn Johnson. I said, I'll cover you. Man, I don't know. That's- that's my way of motivation, though. Yeah, I hear you. I tell you, he's 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 had a you know. I, I think he's found a home in Jacksonville because I know you know he went he drafted in Buffalo. I know there was some concern there because of the weather and that kind of thing. And then he went to the Raiders and uh, he he got high marks there. But when he was a free agent, I think you said it was the the Bears had a shot at him, but he really wanted to go somewhere warm. And uh, Jacksonville just seems to be a great fit with Trevor Lawrence and and the offense they have there. I think I think Isaiah really matured a lot, and he he looked at what's best for him. Like I'll be playing in good weather every now and then. I have to go to an opposing team, might play in some some cold conditions, but I don't have to live there in those cold conditions. He looked at who the quarterback is. He looked at his surroundings, like you know the running back Etn. He um he had a cast around him, and I think that was very smart on his part. Um, because I've I've shared things that happened to me. If I had to do it all over again, and I'm a free agent after Dallas, I think I'll stay in Dallas. I wouldn't just jump at the money because going to the Rams, you know, I didn't have a Troy, I didn't have an Emmitt Smith, I didn't have a Charles Haley, I didn't have these people around me that helped make me successful. And um, 
And that was important for Isaiah to find that cast around him. So when he looked at everybody, you know, they may have Justin Fields, but it's Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence. Um, who's the running back? I still don't even know who the running back is. Um, you know, they were looking for Isaiah to be that piece. And, and one of the things that, you know, it's, it's important when you go to a different team like that, they sometimes look at you as the savior. Okay, this is the missing piece that we need. And, and paying that, that high salary, you know, you got to show up every week. You have to show up every week. You know, one leg or not, you have to show up. Robert Jones, our guest. Let's take another commercial break. We'll come back. We'll talk Dallas Cowboy football coming up. More on the Pirates as well with Robert Jones right after this. My name is Will Bell, and I'm a proud ECU graduate and come from a big pirate family, and I'm running for Greenville City Council at large. I'm running for my fourth term and believe in safety, jobs, and stability. Safety means making Greenville the best place for first responders to call home. Jobs means focusing on expanding industries through partnerships like the ENC Alliance, and stability means no more tax increases. Vote now or on November 7th for Will Bell for Greenville City Council at large. For more information, visit my Facebook page today at Will Bell for Greenville City Council. The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier restaurant and bourbon authority. Jefferson's, Basil Hayden, Woodford Reserve, and a Midwinter Night's Dram are just a few of the incredible bourbon options. The Rick House features the very best steaks and fresh, made-from-scratch pastas. The Rick House can host your corporate event or special parties in the 3,000-square-foot banquet hall. Join the Rick House for Sunday brunch from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and for the wine tastings on the last Friday of every month. The Rick House. Turkey, ham, bacon, these and other meats are great around the holidays and every other day, but they all leave behind grease when you cook them, and grease is a real pain in the drain. When you pour grease down a drain, it cools and can clog sewer lines. That can lead to sewer spills, which are messy, bad for the environment, and can also be expensive. Never pour grease down the drain. Instead, collect it in a container like a used soup can or jar. Let it cool and throw it away in the trash. Together, we can protect our sewer system and the environment. For more information, go to GUC.com. Get ready for tailgate season at Shimmer Boutique. Locally owned and operated, Shimmer has the best selection of game day apparel and accessories for ladies. And gentlemen, Shimmer has a newly restocked wide selection of t-shirts with brands like Local Boy, Old South, Southern Fried Cotton, and the newest edition, Pimp Shrimp. Shimmer has everything you need this fall. They carry the largest selections of Yetis and Hey Dudes and more. Be ready for game day and every day at Shimmer Boutique with locations in Greenville, Winterville, and Jacksonville. Go Pirates! Hey John, I uh, see your new system's having issues already. Yeah, I used the other guy with an AC brand I've never heard of. You should have used Delcor. John, they install train. It's hard to stop a train. I know, but the other guy was cheaper. Cheaper isn't better, John. I know. I know. Don't use the other guy. Call Delcor. For a limited time, buy a new train system and pay 0% interest for 12 months. Visit Delcor.com for more details. Delcor, the service professionals. When you walk through the doors of Villa Verde, you'll experience the sights, sounds, and smells of authentic Dominican flavors. This is Jay from Villa Verde inviting you to come by and try one of our amazing empanadas. Our famous red snappers, grouper bites, seafood paella, Cuban sandwiches, and much, much more. Relax on the patio with a fresh mojito or a cold beer while enjoying one of our out-of-this-world desserts, like our rum pineapple cake or our famous stress ledges. Villa Verde on 10th Street, a platform for good and a proud supporter of the Pirate Nation. Pirate Radio. So you believe in pirates? Pirates aren't Santa. They did exist, they did have treasures, and they did bury it. You know, I had an eye patch when I was six. Who didn't, my friend? Who didn't? The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned utilities mean local control, low rates, and high reliability. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back to our show. Robert Jones, three-time Super Bowl champion with the Dallas Cowboys, joining us from Raleigh today. Of course, his son, Zay Jones, also a great player at East Carolina and uh, the all-time leader in receptions uh, for the NCAA. Robert, when you, when you think about the Cowboys now, do you watch their games each week? Do you keep up with them? Are you a fan? Um, I'm not a fan, but I, I, 
I mean, I would watch the highlights. And some games, obviously, when they come on, like, you know, I think it was a couple Monday nights ago I watched them. Um, yeah, I, I like to watch them every now and then, but I'm not like a like a fan like that. I normally, you know, just like to watch Jacksonville because I like to see Zay play, like see him do well, you know. When you look at the Cowboys these days, do you think they can get over the hump in the playoffs? I mean, they, they come up with a 12-win a season and they get into the postseason in the last couple of years. The 49ers have knocked them out and they look dreadful against the 49ers you know, earlier in the season. Uh, but when you look at you know, I look at it, the, the Cowboys, the 49ers, and the Eagles are the top three team. Maybe the Lions are up there as far as the best teams in the NFC, but the, the Lions took it on the chin yesterday to the Ravens. But you know, do you think that, that they've got the the what they need to get over the hump and make make it to a championship game again finally make it to a Super Bowl um Brian in the NFL as you can see any team can be beaten you know Miami beat somebody like you know they put a, a college score on somebody a few weeks ago and then the next week Buffalo just beat the crap out of sure them. did and then the next week Miami uh, win, you know, by a large number. Um, and then they go to Philadelphia because I thought they gained the confidence back, and then they lose to Philadelphia. I mean, it wasn't a, a big score, but they they lose to Philadelphia. And then, you know, we always thought Buffalo had, you know, Sean McDermott had built like a powerhouse up there. Well, how in the heck do you lose to New England, who's hardly winning this year? Um so I'm just watching all these games, and then Kansas City does not look as strong. You know, even though they have a good record, they're not looking as strong as they looked you know, as the Kansas City, you know, in, in the past. So, you know, Dallas, some games that they are expected to win, um, they don't win. And then there's some games that you, know, you think Dallas is going to get the crap beat out of them, and they win. I, I just don't – I just cannot predict a real dominant team, you know, Detroit was doing really, really well. And and just a couple of days ago, I'm like, man, Detroit might be the real deal. The coach got them playing really, really well. And then they just stink it up against Baltimore. I'm like, you know, I I don't think Baltimore is, is yet a dominant team, but anybody can be beaten on any given Sunday. Like that, 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 uh, that movie. Yeah. Any given Sunday, you're right, and, and it's it's to me the people that can gamble on NFL football and make money, I have the utmost amount of respect for because I'm telling you, you know, and and there's point spreads, and then there's you know just picking winners in the NFL. I mean, you know, uh, who who would have seen some of the upsets that we've seen, but it, it's just uh, the most fun to me about watching NFL football on a Sunday afternoon is when you get into the fourth quarter and you get a couple of games that are going to go down to the wire and you get you know you get those games that, that you know they're still in doubt and uh it's 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 really you know to me it's, it's great theater it's just fun to watch but uh it's not everybody's cup of tea but it's always been been mine since i was a kid just watching nfl football on sunday afternoons that's what we did you know and, and as as my career has has gone through almost 40 years now friday night high school football the friday night lights they're magical saturdays college football whether we're on the road with east carolina at home with east carolina the games that are that are on around it and then of course on sunday with the in the nfl and everything that goes with that and it's just the the whole football season you, you know it's, it's just to me it's the best time of the year and then when you get to january and you start in the nfl playoffs and you get the super bowl and then it's that you know lull basketball i love basketball in some ways love baseball in some ways but uh there's nothing like football season you still like football season the best i like football season i like this time of the year i just I just don't like some of the things that's happened to it that to to really um it's it's not exciting no more. I mean it's still fun time of the year, but it's not exciting no more. You know, some games you just look forward to, man, and you could not get away from the television. You had to watch the game the entire time. Now it's it's not like that. It's it's too much of a soft game. We used to watch the game because of the warrior sport in it man it was it was all about the hits and stuff i mean i know you can remember this brian like every monday night you know tom jackson and the guys 
you got jacked up. Yeah, I remember that. Yep, jacked up. You, you remember that? Man, they took that show off TV now. That's that's a crime now. That's a crime. So the game, the warrior spirit of the game has just been taken away. It's it's too – I can't even say the name on the radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep, keep that one under your hat. But but I think you're right. I think in some ways and, – and I go back to – you know I can remember the very first you know year of Monday Night Football. I think it was 69. I was seven years old. And, and I've told this story before, but my mom – bedtime was 9 o'clock. Well, the game started at 9 o'clock. And so my mom would have this little Bible study thing about 8 – 50, 855, and I can remember looking at my dad and saying, Dad, they're getting ready to kick off. We we got we to gotta say amen and get over to the TV so we can watch the start of the football game. But but that's and, – and Monday Night Football back in the day was bigger than I think it is now. And I think it's still – you know, a lot of people watch it, but back in the day when it first started and it got uh, snowballed into, into the event, Howard Cosell, that's even before your time. This is Howard Cosell. I mean, it, it was big time. I remember that, man. He comes on Howard Cosell, and Howard Cosell would tell a story. It's like, on this side, we got Tony. <laughs> there you go. Alex Cowboy. And, you know, the other thing was okay. – was, we didn't get all the highlights of all the games. So if you didn't get the, your favorite team on Sunday, the only chance you got to see any highlights at all, this was before ESPN and all of that, at halftime of the Monday night game, they would go through and show a couple of plays from each one of the games. And, you know, a lot of weeks, that was the only highlight you had a chance to see of your favorite team. Yep. yep. Yeah, it's just – crazy how it's all come around and now you get so much information and now with with with, with the internet and tiktok and you know, twitter and everything else x whatever it's called now you get so much information and you're so flooded uh it's just it's just hard to keep up all right i want to ask you this before we, we let you go because i know you're friends with dion and i don't know if you keep up with him these days or not but did you see the saturday night live skit that, that they they did a parody of, of dion did you see that i i I, I didn't see the skit, but I saw on on the X or the Twitter, whatever you want to call. It, I saw uh, what is what is the guy's name? I can't think of his name. He had on his his prime time sunglasses, hat, sweatshirt, all of that stuff. Hey, what's his name? Clip Keenan Thompson. Keenan Thompson, great comedian. I, I, everything he does, I think, is really really well done. But when he did Dion, it was hilarious. No, I got I got to go watch it now. So I'm gonna go watch it. Yeah, as a Dion fan, I think you'll uh, you'll appreciate that, Robert. What can this Pirate football team do now? They they lack confidence. They're one and six on the season. They're on the road at UTSA. They're going to be a nineteen point underdog. I think it's the last thing I saw there. They're going to play Tulane at home, and Tulane's one of the best teams in the conference. So that's going to be a tough game at home. Uh, I know they've got Navy still on the schedule coming up later on. They've got Tulsa, I believe, the last week of the season. But what can this Pirate team do to to, to to get some momentum for next year as they close this thing out. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you like someone had told me before, when you've tried it your way, so it takes each individual on that team. When you've tried it your way and you've done things your way, then you show up on Saturday and you try to play. How well did that work for you? Now, let's try it the way that we were taught how to do it. Let's try it somebody else's way instead of trying it your way. So I'm speaking to every individual football player on that team. I'm not saying guys are lazy and guys didn't work, but you tried it your way and it's gotten you nothing. So let's just try it now. Like everything you do, whether it's off the field or on the field, you're doing exactly what Coach Houston and his staff are saying to do. Yeah, and it's almost easier said than done when you when you talk about something like that because, you know, you got an offense right now that that you know trying two different players at quarterback. You know, Flynn had some some you know some a couple of really nice plays in the game. They came close with a long pass that would have set them up late. That was overturned by replay, and which turned out to be a good call through replay. But but I think you know until that offense, the offensive line, you know, they got blown up so many times in the Charlotte game so they like the whole offense lacks confidence and if you have a team without any confidence you know it's really difficult to have anything positive happen isn't it 
I'm sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. I, I had a little interference, man. I was just saying saying about confidence. When you when you lack confidence in a squad and 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 you're trying to you know in, to compete, you know the offensive line was blown up so many times the other day. You know, quarterback doesn't have much time to to, to react and read and and make a pass. And and when it comes down to confidence, you know, how do you gain that confidence as an athlete and as a team? Um, it just takes one person to spark the team. And, and Brian, you've seen this before. It, it takes one person. It could be a DB with a pick. It could be quarterback throwing a nice, a nice touchdown, running back with a long run. It takes one person, maybe a wide receiver making a great catch. It takes one person to spark the team. And somebody has to step up. Got to lean on that one person. So there's somebody on that team that we can lean on that can spark that. You need somebody to stand up. But overall, the team, I still believe that they've all done it their way. Now it's time to do it the coach's way. And I'm pointing my finger at the player. Wrapping things up with Robert Jones. Robert, tell us what you're up to these days. Man, I just I do a little work, and I like cooking on my Blackstone Grill, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I'm I'm about to cook lunch right now. What are you having? Some, some pastrami sandwiches. Wow, the man likes his Blackstone Grill. What's your what's your what's your best dish on the Blackstone? You name it. Uh, all right, all right, so so when Robert Jones finally invites his favorite sportscaster over for dinner, what's he going to cook on the Blackstone? You got to open the invitation. <laughs> Text you right afterwards, my home address, and and uh, you can come, man, and we'll pick a Saturday, and we'll watch an East Carolina game together. How about that? That'd be fun. I usually have to do some work during the East Carolina games, but but that would be a, that would be a blast. I hope you can get to a game coming up uh, later on this season. Again, the Tulane game is going to be a three thirty kickoff. That's coming up a week from this Saturday. So back to back three thirties for East Carolina's Pirates at UTSA coming up this week, and then the home game with the Tulane Green Wave and Tulane really good football program having another good year this year. The Tulane game, by the way, on ESPN two or ESPNU. So that uh, TV news from today. Robert, anything else you want to tell Pirate Nation before we get you out of here? I have nothing else, Brian, but, you know, I'm just going to still pull for my Pirates always. Well, we appreciate that. You're one of the great Pirates of all time. Uh, you and Zay Jones, both two of the all-time great Pirates. Uh, Pirate royalty, when you think of the Jones family, Robert Jones and uh, son Zay. If you talk to Zay, tell him that we all said hello and uh, we're rooting for him for those Jaguars each and every uh, Sunday that we get a chance to see him play. I would let him know, Brian. I appreciate you all. I appreciate you. Robert Jones, three-time Super Bowl champ, East Carolina All-American, and Hall of Famer joining us today from Raleigh. We'll take our final commercial break. We'll come back. We'll wrap up this edition of the Brian Bailey Show for you right after this. North Carolina State Parks invites you to enjoy camping your way. With the weather changing, booking your own cabin is the perfect solution for your camping getaway. Reserve campsites or cabins today at Jones Lake, Goose Creek, and Cliffs of the News. Whether you enjoy traditional camping or air-conditioned cabins that can be rented with Wi-Fi, your next adventure can include hiking, beautiful scenery, and sunsets by the campfire. For information on booking a cabin, visit ncparks.gov. Here with Christy Conway today from ENC Pirate Realty, and you guys are more than real estate agents. That's right. We also provide property management services for rental properties. We have found that rental property owners have difficulty managing their rental properties effectively. We can provide full service property management to those owners to include advertising their homes for rent, tenant screening, rent collections, and maintenance coordination. If you have real estate or property management questions, contact us at encpiratrealty.com. Go Pirates! Hey, Pirates! Nation, Lindsey Gray here with Carolina Caliber. Dove, ducks, and deer, it's that time of year, and we've got the guns and all the gear. When you're not getting rowdy at Dowdy, enjoy browsing our online store and take your pick from the largest selection of firearms and accessories in Eastern NC. Be sure to check out our weekly hot deals, and when you're ready, head to Carolina Caliber. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff are ready to lead you to the perfect treasure. Carolina Caliber on Fire Tower Road in Winterville, it's a time-honored tradition. With U.S. Cellular, it's 
just $19.99 per line for one, two, or three lines. So you don't need that robot daughter you built to get a fourth line for family plan pricing. Oh, Robe Elizabeth? She's not going to like that. The robots will prevail. Oh, boy. Get the low rate of $19.99 per line. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Visit uscellular.com for details. Get one, two, or three lines for $19.99 per line right now at Atlantic Wireless, your U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Bellhaven, Snow Hill, and three locations in Greenville. This is Frank Lee with Appliances Superstore. We make buying appliances easy. Now we make buying golf carts easy. Yes, that's right. We have golf carts in stock. Icon and Bentelli, street legal golf carts that are ready to hit the road. Mention Pirate Ready and get $500 off your new cart. It's just that easy. Get your new golf cart today and save $500 when you mention Pirate Radio. We're located right off 264 behind the new DMV or appliancessuperstore.com. Appliances Superstore, where we make buying appliances and golf carts easy. Take control of your health with ArcPoint Labs. There are a number of hormones that are important for a male's general health, other than just the common thought of testosterone. The ArcPoint Labs overall men's health panel tests for complete blood count, liver and kidney function, cholesterol, thyroid levels, and more. Get a simple blood test today by getting started at arcpointlabs.com or call 629-6228. ArcPoint Labs. Accurate, reliable, confidential testing. Visit arcpointlabs.com. Pirate Radio. Where it is a first down. Pirates. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Working for our community, not for shareholders. Now, back to the show. All right, wrapping up this edition of The Brian Bailey Show. Again, Pirates at UTSA, Texas, San Antonio, 3.30 kickoff. That means an 11.30 a.m. start time for the Bud Light pregame tailgate with Clip Rock and company. And then the uh, Pirates and Tulane a week from Saturday at home, East Carolina and the Green Wave in a 3.30 kickoff. That game to be televised on ES. ESPN2 or ESPNU. I want to thank Robert Jones, three-time Super Bowl champ, the East Carolina All-American and the Hall of Famer, just for shedding some light on some of the frustrations that he had, you know, in 1989, 1990, when he, you know, he came in 88, I guess it was, leading up to that magical season of 1991. So Pirate fans are ready to you know jump off the Pirate ship. Things can turn around and turn around quickly. So I think Robert Jones and that bunch are uh, proof of that from back in the day. So I want to thank Robert Jones for joining us. Again, Pirate football this week against Texas San Antonio. First ever matchup for the Pirates and the Roadrunners. That's our show for this week. Have yourself a great sports week, and we'll see you back here next week on the Brian Bailey Show. This has been the Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, and also brought to you by the Angus Grill, Bostick Sug, Bojangles, East Coast Grady, Gavigan Insurance, Greenville Auto World, Papa John's, Greenville Utility Company, Pepsi, The Rick House, Taft Taft and Hagler, and Tiebreakers. Join us next week for another edition of The Brian Bailey Show, right here on Pirate Radio. This is Pirate.